What am I going to tell you about miracles for the A-level? Well, not enough for you to get a great grade. You need to use your A-level book. Okay, this is just a brief summary. So, miracles, when you talk about it, you need to let the examiner know that there's a realist understanding of miracles. That means they look at evidence. They look at evidence in the world. And if something, an event has taken place and it's kind of your evidence is there, shows you've broken the laws of nature, well then yes, there's a, a miracle that has taken place. Whereas realists would say, well, everything comes down to how we interpret it in our minds. So a miracle, whether it's taken place or not, is actually subjective, okay? It's not actually the physical evidence in front of you. It's how you've interpreted something that you've seen. Our main man for the realist point of view is Hume. Now, you have to use his definition in any essay. Otherwise, in the exam, you look like me complete and utter idiot. So his definition is coming up on the screen now. Hume is saying effectively that miracles are possible, but look, you've got a whole body of evidence for the laws of nature. Since the creation of the Big Bang 14 billion years ago or so, you're not going to have as much evidence for a miracle as the laws of nature have. The laws of nature are really set in stone. But when you say this miracle has broken the laws of nature, have you got enough evidence, body of evidence, to break those 14 billion years of um, evidence for uh, the laws of nature? And your answer is probably not. Furthermore, Hume is going to say that people who accept miracles or believe in miracles are ignorant or uh, religious people and therefore we just don't know any better. Class, class is all of us, I guess, as fools. But then on the other hand, he rates the Roman historian Tacitus who records miracles. Well, on the one hand, you're saying we're stupid if we believe in miracles and then you hold up someone as this um, model, someone with a jolly good brain on them who records miracles. So it's not quite uh, consistent there. Swinburne would say, look, you've got the principles of credulity and testimony, and therefore, you know, if you experience something and there's nothing to kind of say, hang on a minute, maybe that person has had um, too much to drink or is on drugs or has a mental health issue, if you've got nothing like that, will believe your miracle, okay? And the problem is, if we went down Hume's route and we never accepted anything because everything we saw couldn't break the laws of nature, well then we are dismissing, we are dismissing new evidence that maybe we need to take on board to see, is our understanding of the way the laws of nature work um, complete? So laws of nature are fine, but it's our understanding of them. And that's why it's good to take on board Swinburne's uh, principles of credulity and testimony to say, yep, yeah, all right, maybe this is new evidence. Maybe there has been a break in the law of nature or there's a change or a little um, blip in the laws of nature and we need to add to our understanding whereas if we take Hume's point of view we dismiss anything that doesn't fit in with the laws of nature and our knowledge of the laws of nature is not a hundred percent. The Muslims will say I got this kind of miracle that confirms Muhammad. Um, Christians would say, I get this kind of, uh, I've experienced this kind of miracle, it confirms Jesus Christ, and so on and so forth. And so he says, well, that's not consistent. But you could argue against that, and you could say, actually, all these miracles, I think it was Hick, but you'll have to uh, check that up, all these miracles tell us more or less the same thing. They don't conflict with each other, they're all telling us that God has power that we do not, or God is concerned for us and he responds to our needs and so all these miracles from different faiths actually do back up the fact that there is a possibility that miracles take place because they're confirming God's saving power in our world. Then you have Holland and I'm talking about the man here not the um, not the Netherlands. 
he says, you know, it's your interpretation. Um, it's your interpretation of events. So he gives an example of a boy stuck on train tracks, train is going for him, and mother thinks, oh hell, well, she doesn't think, oh hell, but anyway, um, she prays the train driver, you'll have to check in the book, he either faints or has a heart attack. It's a natural occurrence, but she interprets it in her own mind as actually being an answer to prayer, as it being a miracle. So Holland would say, look, uh, your understanding of miracles didn't really happen. It's a natural event, it's just your interpretation, it's subjective. Then you have Tillich, and he would also say that miracles are subjective. He says it's an amazing event, it's a natural event, it's not uh, supernatural, it's not broken the laws of nature, but it's symbolic and it helps people in their faith. And so it all comes down to interpretation. And then you've got Hick, let me check um, my notes over here. He says again that uh, what we class as miracles are natural events like the parting of uh, the Red Sea. But in fact, it, so it's not a breach of nature, but again, it's how we interpret it. Maybe our knowledge of nature isn't great enough and that needs to expand, okay? Right, then you've got anti-realist views. Wiles would not accept that miracles really happened. He thinks the creation of the world was a miracle and it happened, and that's it. And he is quite clever. He doesn't, I guess, want to accept miracles because if you accept miracles, you'd say, God is unfair. Why does God work a miracle for one person but not a, another person? And it's quite obnoxious in a way because why would Jesus turn water into wine for the uh, wedding feast at Cana, a small matter, but for the Holocaust, where was God? Why was there no miracle? And therefore there is a problem. So by saying that there are no miracles, that it's kind of uh, symbolic, then you get round that problem of evil. The other thing is if God has created the world and then God is constantly coming and kind of fixing things in our world, working miracles, then it's suggesting that this perfect God didn't create a perfect world and that is a problem. So Wiles would say that miracles are actually symbolic. They bolster our faith. We read about the miracles in the Bible and that bolsters our faith. They're symbolic for us. And he would say that prayers really than God, rather than God responding to our prayers and ans answering our prayers and working a miracle for us, we just become more in tune with God's will. Okay, so miracles don't really take place and they're only there to help us and deepen our faith. But there's a problem with that because, you know, is such a God worthy of worship? if he's not going to come and intervene and answer our prayers. Um, you could say that, you know, we have a deist view of God, God's created the world and then left us. That's not the Christian view. We believe that God is a personal God. He's concerned about us and our well-being. And that's a theist um, point of view, that God is involved with the world rather than God creating the world and leaving it, as Wiles says, um, that is a deist um, point of view. Many Christians would disagree with Wiles because they would say our personal experience tells us that God has answered our prayers in the most unlikely of situations and therefore we accept miracles uh, take place. We also rely on the Catholic Church that has been dismissive of most of the miracles in Lourdes but they have accepted 71 miracles to date after great expense and investigation and therefore we would accept that uh, there are miracles in the world and God is a personal God who relates to us and so will answer some prayers. Why he doesn't answer all prayers or work miracles for everyone, we do not know. God is transcendent and miracles are beyond us and therefore maybe miracles do happen but we don't have that capacity to fully understand them. Then there's the other problem, Christians will argue with Wiles and say but if you're telling us the miracles in the Bible are just symbolic 
then that means the resurrection didn't really happen. And the resurrection is key to Christianity. It's the basis of our faith. If, did Jesus, if Jesus didn't really rise from the dead, he's not really the son of God and we shouldn't be worshiping him. The resurrection as a symbolic miracle doesn't do it. So for Christians, they would say, yes, those miracles really did take place in the Bible because that is God's power at work. What is the problem with that? And that is the very basis of our faith, that huge miracle. Furthermore, the Catholic Church will canonize saints, will canonize people as saints only after a couple of miracles have been proved, if you like, that have been a result of us praying specifically to that particular person and that is proof for them that that person now is a saint. So miracles in a way are beyond us but you need to be able to argue for and against and you need to be able to be a philosopher yourself and decide do you agree with Wiles, do you agree with Hume or do you have your own um, viewpoint and please be critical in the exam and ask rhetorical questions, it all helps. Now, you getting a fabulous grade for your A-level will not be down to a miracle, let me tell you, it'll be down to your hard work.